starting a family. They wait until they are 18 years old to start a family. Uh, or some just don't put in responsible preparation for beginning a family. During the season of bishops, there were some issues or concerns that were raised. Why do some people abandon the idea of family? Why don't they want to start a family? Or why are they postponing family life? Maybe later on we can interact on that. But just to share with you, one big concern is financial. They say, I am not economically, financially stable yet. I cannot even sustain my own life. I am not ready to start a family. Some people postpone weddings, their marriage, because of the cost of a wedding. They have to spend much for their uh, wedding attire, their gowns, their uh, suits. They have to save money for the banquet, the dinner, the reception. They have to save money for the video, <laughs> for the photographs. <laughs> and they say, oh, well, if I don't have enough money for that, then what type of wedding will happen? And now, they, they want weddings and tourism to come together. So I am from the Philippines. I will get married in the Caribbean. Destination wedding. But you need money to save. You need to save money for that. And so while I'm saving money, I postpone, I postpone, I postpone my wedding. Others have to face emotional, psychological concerns, the level of maturity, the level of maturity that we need for a commitment to marriage and to family life. I don't know what's happening in different parts of the world, but there was a psychologist in the Philippines who said that nowadays, hey Filipino, listen, <laughs> nowadays a regular Filipino gets out or graduates from adolescence at the age of 35. <laughs> So at the age of 34, a regular Filipino still thinks and acts like a teenager. <laughs> Just like me. When I share this with an Italian bishop, the Italian bishop told me, where? You are lucky because here in Italy, they become adults at the age of 41. <laughs> so, uh, so we are expanding and expanding adolescence. So when will we make a commitment? Emotionally, psychologically, and relationally mature to start a commitment. For us, Maybe we need to address the need for a deeper, biblical, scriptural, and faith formation regarding the beauty of marriage and family. Because even among Catholics, 
marriage is becoming a social and cultural event and less of a faith sacramental event. And finally, we also realize that there are some ideologies, thought patterns that do not always agree with the teachings of the church regarding marriage. So these are some of the concerns that were surfaced during the Synod of Bishops and affirmed by Pope Francis. Marriage is beautiful. It is good news. Many people believe in marriage. Many young people still believe in marriage. And I should tell Pope Francis, when we see him next week, in Woods, I asked the youth how many want to start a family and practically all of them raised their hands. <laughs> this will be good news. life, the inner divine life 
of Father, Son, and Spirit. That's how a family starts, the gift of God's love. So to God be the glory. God, who is Trinity, Father, Son, and Spirit, shares with us the love that enables different individuals to become one family. So we start a family by opening ourselves to God's grace and honey. But as I already indicated, it starts with God's grace, but we need to accept that grace. Every gift must be received, must be received with recognition and with responsibility. This is what we call intentionality. I intend to cooperate with God's gift. God may give us the gift to start a beautiful family, but do I accept it and intend me to pursue that gift, to make it grow, to develop it, and to see it to its fulfillment? In 1 Corinthians 13, St. Paul gives us the highest spiritual gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And for him, it is the highest, the superior gift. And what is it? Love. You may have other gifts. You may have the gift of speech. But without love, you are just making noise. Just like me. <laughs> Maybe I'm just making noise. If I am speaking without love, then I'm just making noise. I'm just like a planning sinner. The greatest of God's gift in the Holy Spirit is love. It is given to us to start a family. But there are no easy recipes for starting a family of love. I cannot give you, your bishops cannot give you, your old parents cannot give you a recipe so that you can start a family that is fully packaged as a good, holy family. No. We just trust that God's spirit of love will be given to us. But you need to intend, if I may paraphrase what St. Paul says, the gift is given, but we need to intend to be patient and kind. You have to make a decision to be patient and kind. You have to decide to serve you must decide to understand the other person. You must decide to be respectful. You must decide to be generous. You must decide to forgive. You must decide to believe, to hope, and to bear all things. That's the gift that you have to accept and you have to mean it. To mean it. We start a family because God starts it. And you start the process with God. Not just with your partner, but with God. You, together. 
starting with them. But you will realize starting will happen every day. Starting a family is a daily, a daily concern. Starting a family means starting to start it over and over again. There is no end to starting. When you start, it is just the beginning of many other starting a family. So you do not say, wow, finally, I have started a family. No, tomorrow you start it again. <laughs> maybe this afternoon, maybe this evening, or maybe after a few minutes. <laughs> I had an experience. I officiated in a wedding of a couple at 9 o'clock in the morning. By 6 o'clock in the evening, it came back to me. We decided to separate <laughs> the same day. So they could start again. Start. You start to start over and over again. You always start with acquaintance. You get to know the person. You get to you married someone at the age of 25. By the time both of you are 55, you need to get to know each other again. When you met her, when she was 18, she smelled of a wow, rose perfume. <laughs> now she is 65. She smells of menthol painkiller. <laughs> so you need to get to know her again. You start today with a woman who doesn't smell of rose perfume anymore, but of yeah. <laughs> you marry a man with a shock of black. By the time he was 40, no more hair. <laughs> if you are a wife with long hair, keep your long hair and then cut it. Bring it to a shop so that the shop could make it into a wig. <laughs> It made me 
impossible love. But we need to accept it and never get tired. Never get tired. Before I go to the last portion, how many more minutes do I have? 15 minutes. <laughs> You know, it is not just difficulties or fights that call for a new start. As I described it, there is called Amoris Tadizia. Every stage of life of the family is a new beginning, a new start. So do not give up on each other. Do not give up. Because God will not give up on us. So let us not give up on each other. I remember in the world meeting of families in Philadelphia, I was asked to give a, a conference, a sharing on the family, the place where wounded hearts are healed. And you start again with wounded hearts. And I, I shared with them a, a song that was uh, composed, I think it was uh, composed by Bert Makara. And, uh, and for me, it's still one of the best songs regarding starting again and again. No, the, I'm sorry, the translators, we have to translate in different languages, but I don't know how they will do it. But uh, yeah. in English, it's still, it's still retains its, its beauty. Uh, the song says, a chair is still a chair, even when there is no one sitting there. But a chair is not a house, and the house is not a home, when there is no one there to hold you tight, and no one there you can kiss. Good night. A room is still a room, even when there is nothing there but gloom. But a room is not a house, and the house is not a home, when the two of us are far apart, and one of us has a broken heart. Now and then, I call your name. Suddenly your face appears. But it's just a crazy game. When it ends, it ends in tears. Then the beautiful part, darling, have a heart. Don't let one mistake keep us apart. I'm not meant to live alone, turn this house into a home. When I climb the stairs and turn the key, oh, please be there, still in love with me. I don't have a suit. 
Christos are not married. We know that. Why does he behave this way? Some people said Jesus was under the spell of the prince of demons, the Elzebub. And you know, his own relatives thought he was crazy. Jesus was arrested. His friends left him. But who stood at the foot of the cross of Jesus? Peter denied him. I do not know him. Judas sold him. Nobody wanted to be associated with Jesus. But Mary, at the foot of the cross of Jesus, was declaring, she is my son. I am his mother. I will not leave him. Even when others have abandoned him, I will be here. I am his mother. And the new family is born. Woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. Who is my mother? Who is my brother? Who is my sister? Those who do the will of the Father is brother, sister, mother to me. Even in the face of trials, God does not give up on families. God will send love, the Spirit, but we need to accept it. Let us start rebuilding our nuclear family, but let us also start building again and again the family of God. This is a beautiful encounter. People, young people from different countries, speaking different tongues, eating different types of food. <laughs> you with different experiences. You are one family. Why? Because of the love of God. And we are all striving to follow the will of God. That's how to start a family. Believing in the will of God, the way Mary, Joseph, and Jesus did. A family that began with the will of God and intended by human beings. A family threatened, but constantly starting, starting, even in the face of the greatest trials. Starting a family. Learn now not to give up on persons. Not to give up on anyone. Starting a family means learning how to start without end. The moment you end your capacity to start, you are not capable of starting a family. Let me close this with a story. You know, there are many displaced people right now, refugees, most especially refugees. I visited a refugee camp in Greece on the border with Macedonia. And there I saw people running away from violence and war. They had nothing, only the clothes that they had on their bodies and the most precious to them, their families. They bring only what is precious, their families. 
Unfortunately, some of them have witnessed the death of family members as they escape from war. You have children, most especially children, who are now traveling without parents. I was able to interview the woman in charge of the distribution of food and humanitarian help to the refugees. She was the vice mayor of the village. I asked her, is this part of your job as vice mayor? She said, no, this is volunteer work for me. I said, hmm, why? Don't you have enough things to do as vice mayor? You added onto yourself uh, more responsibilities as a volunteer. And she said, young people, listen to this. She said, my ancestors were refugees. I have refugee DNA in my body. They are my brothers and sisters. I will never abandon them. They are family. Even in a camp, in a camp for refugees, we are asked by the Lord, start a family. Start a family. Of mercy, of compassion. Embrace them. Do the will of the Father. Make them experience the love that the Holy Spirit wants for the whole world. Thank you very much for your